Well, hello everybody, I'm back. Uh, and that is because I had been planning, and then I completely forgot while I was shooting the video a little while ago, I had been planning to actually show you um, me going through this thing and fixing it. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and get the light right because that's always my challenge. Uh, no. Okay, so all right. Um, and so here's what I'm going to do. So I found the area where that number one drill fell off. And so I'm just going to place uh, a drill there. Um, now I, I put the, the drill that got lost in this container of number ones. So I'm just uh, picking, picking a drill out. And it's upside down, so I'm just fixing it, and there we go, Oops. and you see what I mean about the, the <laughs> this is, this, the pickup pen is quite, quite sticky, I, and I love that because I, I've, I don't have to use very much goo at all. Okay, so I'm going to go through this pretty much line by line, looking for weirdness. And one of the other things I noticed is that the drills are not all of a consistent height. So here I find a drill that is, um, it's not as high as the others. So I'm just picking it off. Um, here's one of those ones that I thought was a little bit wonky. So again, I'm just picking it off. I'll go back and I'll uh, fill them all in in a little while. But yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing now is just looking at each diamond. Because I've got um, all those spares, it's like, why would I leave a less than perfect diamond on here? Sorry, you're not seeing everything that I'm doing. Uh, I think I have to lift you up a little bit. Hopefully that won't uh, make it impossible for you to see what I'm doing, but I'm being quite ruthless here about removing drills. Um, yeah. Now most of them are good. Um, but there are the odd little uh, strangers, and I'll straighten them out at the same time as I go along. Now I can go fairly quickly. Uh, yeah, there's another one. Oh, and the silvering, uh, hold on. No, the silvering did not stay on. That's a different drill. Okay. Uh, okay, but I find another one here. And I'm going to hold it up to the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So that is the type of drill that I'm picking off. And it's, I'll pull off a good one just to serve as comparison. So the top one there, that's the good drill, and the bottom one is the not so good drill. So let me just put this one back. And like I say, I haven't rolled these yet. Uh, so, so that's, um, Hopefully they'll adhere a little bit better when I roll them. Now I don't know if you want to see me pick all of these off. Um, I mean, I would be interested in seeing somebody do this just simply to see just how bad is it. Um, and again, I, I don't consider this bad because the only reason that I'm picking off drills now 
is that I didn't realize how many spare drills there would be, and I didn't realize that there was a fault with these drills, just because I'd never used them before. So, oh, and here, okay, and again, these wonky ones are, I'm just trying to, uh, here, these are concave, okay, and I don't know why, but then that leads to this different look on them. So, uh, I'm just going to keep going here. And you can always skip ahead or just, you know, turn off the video at this point. Uh, but if you want to see me placing the new drills, by all means, you can watch through or skip ahead. Uh, I might try and find some music to insert because, oh, I know, I've got a few, um, I've got some more get to know me questions. All right. So, how many siblings do you have? I have two siblings. I have a brother who is two years younger than I am, three years younger than I am, and I have a sister who introduced me to diamond painting, um, who is six and a half years older than I am. One of them, my brother lives in Toronto, and my sister lives in London, Ontario, where where I consider myself from, even though I've lived in a number of towns uh, before that. Um, next question. What is your go-to fast food order? Oh my God, okay, uh, I will tell you. Um, it's McDonald's and, um, and I get a double Big Mac, a large fries, and two apple pies and yes I eat the whole damn thing and then I feel horrible afterwards but I enjoy every single bite thankfully I don't do that too often or I would be as big as a house um, but uh, but yeah like you know when I'm craving fast food that is usually what I'm craving All right, what's my next question? Do you use PC or a Mac? Um, I use both. So I have a PC connected to my television and that's where I stream movies off of movie streaming sites uh, because not everything is on Netflix, but everything is on movie streaming sites. And I use a Mac. Um, I bought a MacBook a few years ago uh, because my daughter when she was shopping for a computer for university she bought a MacBook and um, and anyway I just I'd heard from you know a former colleague who is such a geek that uh, you know Mac is the best and um, and so I bought myself a MacBook and I must say after a lifetime of using PCs I have found, and I'm still finding, and this is about three years in, I'm still finding it's so um, not intuitive to use the Mac. I can't find files. I can't, like, you know, I don't know. I, I copy files to my desktop and they disappear. I, I can't find them. But then when I open another folder, and I can never remember, you know, how I find it in Finder because it seems like I find my files different ways every time. Um, suddenly it's there, but it doesn't show up on my desktop. So it shows up in the desktop folder in, in Finder, but not when I'm looking at my desktop and I don't know why. And I know that there's something because it used to show up on my desktop and I don't know, I must've changed it to setting or something like that, but now they don't set it show up on my desktop anymore. Uh, well, sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. So it's, it is just crazy frustrating okay that one actually that one actually is okay i think yeah that one's okay um all right what else uh and at work i always used pcs so there you go and i have an ipad it's my second ipad and uh, i have an android phone so i am completely inconsistent in my use of operating systems and uh, different kinds of computers and things. 
Um, your most memorable vacation moment. Hmm. Um, well, I would have to say that that was, okay, there were two from um, a family vacation that we took to Portugal when I was in grade five. So I guess I was about, I don't know, 10 or 11 years old. Uh, my sister was about 16, 17. She had a blast. We were there for six weeks. We went at Christmas. Um, she had a blast. I don't think she wanted to come home. Um, but my brother and I, we, uh, it was different because it was a completely different place, like completely different. I mean, we weren't rich or anything like that in Canada, but we went to Portugal and we went to what I thought was a barn. Uh, there was like barn doors and you enter and there was straw on the floor. And uh, there were some animals, I think, in a little pen. And there was this, you know, woman, she was about four foot 12, four foot 10 or something. She was big and round, but tiny in, you know, in stature. And, um, and I was wondering, you know, why is, and, and just the way she was dressed and everything, I thought, why are we in a barn? And why is there a maid coming to get us? And I, I don't know, I can't remember now what it was that made me think that she was a maid. Anyway, it turned out that she was my grandmother. And this was her house, and it was probably two or three hundred years old. There was no glass in the windows. It was just like wooden shutters. Um, it was a stone house. There was no running water in the house. Uh, there was, um, my, my grandparents had been to Canada when I was uh, a baby. I think they came when I was nine months old. Uh, and they stayed until I was about two. I don't actually remember that, except I think I remember my grandfather riding me on his shoulders, uh, or riding me on his back like a, like a horse. Um, I do remember that. And I remember being in my grandmother's arms, watching a house that we had lived in burn down. Uh, we were in a kitchen, looking out the window at the old farmhouse and watching it burn down. Um, so I remember that. Anyway, back to Portugal. So uh, no running water, no indoor toilets. My grandfather and grandmother had been to Canada uh, when I was little. So um, he had gone back and built an outhouse uh, attached to sort of that little tiny compound. Um, and... Uh, Anyway, it was it was culture shock to me. Um, we went to the bedrooms, and of course they gave us the best bedroom. Um, and my parents were sleeping in one bed, and I was sleeping in a, another bed. The bed, the mattresses were stuffed with straw. Um, so my cousin, actually my cousin, my cousin was there as well. Um, my mom's sister uh, and. For some reason, her I can't remember my mom's sister being there, but my cousin was there, and she and I shared this little bed, and um, and I remember the sound of the straw in the mattress, and it was super uncomfortable at first, but you know we were kids, we didn't care after a while, and I slept fine, uh, but it was cold because it was Christmas, um, so I mean there was no snow or anything like that because they didn't get snow, uh, but but it was cold. Um, and so actually that was not the memory that I was going to talk about, but now the whole trip is coming back to me. Um, and we used to play this game. This was not the memory I was thinking of either, but I'll tell you about it. Um, we used to play this game, the kids, because everybody there was poor. Everybody there was poor. Um, where we would take these big nails. Okay. Like they were nails. I would say the length of this pickup pen and we would take the nail by the head by the head or by the point I can't remember whether it was by the head or the point and we would toss it okay with a like a this kind of gesture we would toss it 
and stick it into the dirt. And it was kind of like you were aiming at something. I can't remember what we were aiming at, but anyway, we were aiming at something. And um, and the idea was to uh, to get as close to the target as possible. Um, and anyway, this was this was not a new shiny nail. This was an old rusty nail. And um, this was the first time I had ever played this game. And I ended up sticking the nail, like I, I you know, flipped the nail and it flipped into my my leg. Um, and you know, it, it went in quite deep. I still have a scar. And uh, so I ran back to my grandmother's house and um, and uh, they, par they, they poured this stuff, uh, it's like this white liquor that they make. I think it's left over from, I don't know, processing of grapes, it's called aguardiente, uh, f fire, fiery water. Um, and it's clear and it's, uh, anyway, the, they use it like we use rubbing alcohol. And uh, so they poured that over top of my injury, and uh, and Bob's your uncle. I don't even remember a Band-Aid going on it. Anyway, um, you know, there was there seemed to be no concern of tetanus or anything like that. Uh, so I'm glad that I had had my tetanus shots in Canada, um, you know, as a baby. Um, but yeah, it was just a different life. I remember, okay, so it was cold. It was cold, and... Um, and I guess this was, I don't know when. If I was 11, it would have been 1973. I think they had like a change of government in 1974. And so it changed and it became uh, like a very different country. They, I think they had a dictator until then. Um, and, you know, life was pretty tough for people, um, is my understanding. Uh, anyway, in 1974, I think they had like some sort of a revolution or something like that. I don't know. Uh, for you hif history buffs out there, um, like, I don't know. I'm not pretending to know. I know that 1974 was a big year and the government changed and, and the guy who was, you know, the evil dictator was no longer uh, in power. Anyway, um, so it was cold and people were poor. And I remember uh, seeing a woman walking down the street. Uh, well, the street. It was, they didn't have any paved roads in the town that my parents lived in. Um, so they were like dirt roads. Uh, and she was walking down this road with her oxen or her cows or whatever, pulling some sort of a cart. It, like, it was like peasants from, you know, the, the Middle Ages movies kind of thing. Um, and she had no shoes. And uh, I was told later that she had never owned a pair of shoes. And she had calluses on her feet, on her heels. I remember seeing a callus that had a crack in it that was that deep. The crack in her callus was that deep. Her feet, like the callus on her feet must have been like this thick. Anyway, never wore shoes in her entire life. It was, it was a different world that you know my family came from and uh, you know I've often wondered what was it like for my parents to come here where life is so different like it was so different then now Portugal is you know very modern um, oh there's a missing drill uh, okay um, oh and there's that hair that I was noticing before okay um, anyway it was it was memorable. And then there was the time where my brother, who was about seven at the time, six or seven at the time, uh, my brother and I were walking down, you know, one of the roads, and there, <laughs> and there were a bunch of oxen coming towards us. Oxen or big cows, I don't know. I think they were oxen pulling, you know, whatever the farm, uh, not machinery, but it was like a wagon or something like that. Um, and, and we didn't see any people, and we... We, we rushed into a ditch because there was a ditch at the side of the road and we hid in a ditch from these, from these oxen that we were absolutely terrified of. They were huge, absolutely huge. Anyway, we were very scared. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so that would be 
my uh, most memorable vacation. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had other vacations, and it wasn't a bad vacation. Like, not by any means was this a bad vacation. I think I quite enjoyed myself. I was really happy to go home. I think my sister was not happy to go home. I think she loved being with, you know, the teenagers. Teenagers are teenagers, right? Um, and they were going to dance. It. Well, anyway, dances in Portugal at the time were completely different than, you know, going dancing as we think of it now here. Um, but uh, anyway, she was hanging out with the other teenagers, and, and I think it was a lot of fun uh, for her. But anyway, uh, my brother and I, I think we were, we wanted to have television again. There was like one television set in the entire town um, in a bar or something like that. Uh, yeah, anyway, the food was fantastic. Oh, my God, the food was like, so incredibly delicious uh, and was plentiful. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, people were really poor. I had never experienced poverty like that. Um, but they were happy. Um, so, anyway, so it was a, it was a good uh, but very culture-shocky uh, vacation. So that was my most memorable vacation. Um, and Sister Dear, if you happen to be watching this, I'd be interested to know if I'm right in my memories of how you enjoyed it. Um, so let us know, Sunny Days. Okay, uh, what else? What are your morning and evening routines? Okay, so in the morning, uh, I have always been somebody who likes to sleep in. So even now that I'm not working, uh, I still, when that alarm goes off, because there is an alarm every, well, not every morning. I used to have alarms every morning. When I'm on a diet, I have an alarm every morning because, you know, I, I eat at very specific times. I eat every four hours. And, um, and so I have an alarm to get me up to eat my breakfast. Um, but when I don't have an alarm, I just stay in bed until the dog starts uh, letting me know that she wants to go out. So she sleeps with me. And um, oh, there's another missing, yeah, there's another missing turtle. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so the dog, uh, dog wakes me up, or doesn't wake me up. I always wake up before the dog. But, uh, but she's very patient until she's not patient anymore, and then she wants to go. Uh, so I get up and I brush my teeth and wash my face and uh, you know shower, uh, do that sort of thing, and uh, my morning ablutions. And then I come out and I make myself a coffee, and sometimes I make myself some oatmeal. Uh, sometimes I'll eat something else, and then I uh, will. Now I'll you know. Often I'll shoot a video and start loading it to my Mac before my MacBook before I take the dog out for a walk and then I come back and then I start editing the video that I shot when I shoot a video in the morning. Um, my evening routine? Well, that's pretty simple. Uh, no later than 8 o'clock, I turn on uh, CNN because I like to watch Anderson Cooper and find out all the wacky stuff that's going on in uh, the news. And it is wacky stuff. Um, and then I watch Chris Cuomo, and then I watch Don Lemon, and meanwhile I am diamond painting. Uh, that's, that's what I do like you know most nights of the week. Um, there's usually a night or two that I'm out with friends. Um, so, so those nights are different. And then I will diamond paint, usually late into the night. Usually it gets to the point where I'm falling asleep. Um, and, uh, and then I'll just, I'll finish that section that I'm working on and then I'll go to bed. So that's my night routine. Okay, so I think I've picked off all of the bad drills. I'm just taking 
I'm just taking a uh, a last scan of this. Now there were a couple of drills. Um, that I thought the silvering was just a little bit weird. And if I can find those now, then I'll pick them off as well. Otherwise, they're clearly not all that noticeable. Um, I thought there was one near the top. Oh, there it is. So here, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Anyway, the silver extends uh, beyond the edge of the drill. So um, I doubt anybody else would notice, but I knew it was there. So what the heck since I'm doing this? Anyway, uh, I think that's it. Hold on, I saw another hair here. There's a drill. Huh. All right, well, I'm just gonna put it in the trash. Uh, but where's that hair that I was looking for? Oh my goodness. There it is. Oh, maybe it's not a hair. Maybe it's a problem with the drill. Hold on. anything. I think it was just the light. Okay. Um, I'm just doing the last scan here. I'll get back to the questions in a second. But I do want to concentrate on this. Um, And you're probably seeing stuff that I'm not seeing because the perspective is a little bit different through the camera, so you, you're not seeing exactly what I'm seeing. Um, and you're probably yelling at the screen, oh my god, you missed one! Because that's what I do when I'm watching you guys and, <laughs> and you miss one or something like that. Okay, that one's fine. That one's fine. So what is this? There's a little, oh, okay, so it's just a little bit of silver trash that uh, got loose from a diamond or something like that. Okay. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Yeah, I, by the time I got down here on the painting, I knew that I would have enough drills. So I was being um, much more um, rigorous in, in not using bad drills. So the bad drills that are on the bottom half of the painting, that's because I was tired or because I, um, with the light box or the light pad underneath, um, sometimes you can't see the top of the drill as well. Because I, I found with light on and the light pad, the glitter was blinding. And, uh, and so at the last night, I actually did not use uh, the overhead light. So all I had was the light from below. And so it, whoops, it made things look opaque. Right. A drill popped out with the tweezers, but, but that's okay. It was the drill I wanted to uh, to remove there, so so it's all good. Um, okay, I think that's it. So I'll show you what I've pulled off. Just shake.
shake, shake, shake a little bit. Somewhere there's a drill that flew off just a moment ago. I don't know where. I'll find it. Anyway, so this is what I've just picked off the canvas. Okay, uh, that's quite a bit. And you see, they're mostly uh, concave. In fact, almost all of them. There's one, there's one or two that are good, like they're good, except that there's a little bit of extra silver, or on this one here, um, the silver is cracked off a little bit on the bottom. Anyway, uh, but mostly concave drills. All right, so, oops. All right, I spilled some of the trash there. But that's okay, it's on my silicone mat, so it's not going anywhere. All right, now to fill in the blanks. So for that, I'll get my light pad so that I can see uh, what I'm doing. Find the holes. Come on, come on. All right, and I'm gonna turn off the overhead light. Oh yeah, that's much better for me. I don't know about for you. All right, so I need D. And there are quite a few Ds up here, so I will pour some into a tray. Look at, the, oh my goodness. I don't know about you, but I can see, oh, you can't see the tray. I can, the sparkle on these diamonds is just exquisite. Um, Pick me up pen, okay. And away we go. All right, let me get the next question. Do you have any bad habits? Yes, uh, I overeat. Um, I'm a bit of an obsessive personality uh, and so and when I was a kid, and maybe it's because, you know, my parents did not grow up with plenty, um, uh, I was not allowed to leave food on my plate. You had to clean your plate. And um, I remember sitting at uh, the kitchen table sometimes. It felt like for hours after everyone else had left because there was something on the plate that I didn't like. We, we had a lot of rapini, um, which to this day, I, I will not eat rapini. It disgusts me. Anyway, it was a staple uh, of our meals and um, potatoes, rapini, codfish, and potatoes. Uh, sometimes there was tuna on the potatoes um, and onions mixed in with, with them, which was actually quite good. I liked everything except the rapini. Um, and uh, so I would have to sit at the table until I finished everything on my plate and I was just that just totally grossed me out um, anyway uh, but it also taught me that thou shalt not leave food so uh, to this day I cannot leave food on a plate like you know how people you know leave a little bite of food on a plate at a restaurant or they leave a little you know I can't do that I cannot do that I have to finish everything on my plate um, anyway uh, so that's but but what that means is if I get over served like and and you know that in restaurants you often get way too much food um, you know, more food than, than one person needs. Uh, I will eat everything that's in front of me. The other thing that causes a problem is that um, uh, I have a bottomless pit for a stomach. I don't, like, I can eat and eat and eat. Like, I'm, I'm not a huge person. Now I'm considerably heavier than I should be. Uh, but, um, and I will be going on a diet to lose about 30 pounds, um, 30, 35 pounds. Um, probably starting next week because I've been cleaning out my fridge and pantry of, uh, you know, stuff that I shouldn't be eating. And so hopefully this week I'll be 
actually today I think I have to go and do a major shop for vegetables and then I'm back on my diet um, and when I'm on my diet I mostly eat just vegetables and uh, most of them I eat raw anyway uh, bad habits I would say is eating I used to smoke I used to be a pack a day smoker for many many years from the time I was uh, from the time I was about 14 well I didn't smoke a pack a day when I was 14 but um, until I was 47 and my daughter um, told me that the only thing that she would accept as a birthday present that year was me quitting smoking oh I was so mad at her anyway I, I smoked a pack a day at least and um, and I quit cold turkey and I've never gone back um, but I'd quit cold turkey once before for three years and then, you know, at a party somebody offered me a cigarette and I said, yeah, sure, I haven't smoked for three years, I can have one cigarette. Eh, eh, can't have one cigarette. So I will never smoke again uh, because I know that um, one cigarette is one cigarette too many for me. Uh, for a long time after my daughter made me quit and after I quit for her, I, uh, you know, I thought, okay, when I retire or when she's moved out or whatever, I'll start smoking again. Uh, but now it's like, why would I do that? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna start smoking. Um, I don't even remember that I used to smoke most of the time. I found that diamond that popped off, and it popped off because it was concave. So I'm just now trying to pick it out. Anyway, I'll just uh, there we go. I find that the concave ones are most likely to be upside down in the tray. Okay, uh, anyway, so that's my bad habit, would be smoking and eating. Um, I don't do drugs, but I bet you if I ever did, they would be a bad habit too, because if I liked them, I wouldn't be able to stop. Uh, oh, there's a bad one too. Okay, let's see what's next. Tell us one thing about you that we wouldn't know. Oh, well, okay. So I'm very law-abiding now. Um, but I used to work for the railroad, uh, CN Rail. Uh, my sister worked there when, when I got out of university, and she got me a summer job. And then I got, um, like, I was hired sort of long-term. And, uh, well, I was hired long-term until I was laid off uh, because of cutbacks. Anyway, because it was a last in first out system uh, with their union. Anyway, uh, while I worked at what's called a car yard or the yard at the Talbotville Ford plant, um, I met a, I met all the engineers and um, there was one uh, who took a shine to me and once I, and, and I'm so oblivious to, you know, signals that people send, I didn't even realize that he had taken a shine to me. Uh, you know, the fact that he came and sat on my desk uh, to talk to me every night that I was working, because I worked overnight some nights, and um, other shifts. Anyway, he also worked shifts. Um, the fact that he came to see me every single shift that we were working together did not clue me into the fact that he had a crush on me. Uh, anyway. Um, so I finally did clue in and started seeing him for a while. Uh, that was fraught with all kinds of, anyway, that was not a good relationship. Anyway, uh, but just because like I was naive and uh, he was cheating on me. Anyway, um, we went joyriding one night in a locomotive. So I think I am one of the few people who has uh, been part of stealing and then joyriding in a locomotive. We went, <laughs> we had this locomotive engine that, you know, hauls cars out of the Ford plant and hauls, you know, all the parts into the Ford plant. Uh, and so we, we stole this engine well stole it we borrowed it i mean he was an engineer so he could do that but it was completely unauthorized and i'm sure we both would have been fired um or disciplined if if uh management had ever found out but I, as i recall it was about two or three o'clock in the morning um anyway 
we uh, we took this ro- locomotive and spent about an hour or two joyriding on the tracks in and around London, Ontario. Uh, you know, as he of course knew what the schedules were for all of the passenger and other freight trains. Uh, so uh, so you know there wasn't a danger that we would um, that we would cause an accident with other freight trains. At least I hope that there was no danger. I didn't think about that at the time, but I sure as hell hope he did. Um, anyway, uh, so that was, uh, that was something that you probably didn't know about me. Um, yeah, that was something you probably didn't know about me. Okay, what's your favorite Netflix show? Uh, I would say, hmm, okay, I'm terrible at remembering the names of shows, but there's one that has Gillian Anderson and the guy who played in um, Fifty Shades. I can't remember his name. Charlie Dornan, maybe? Anyway, uh, they're in it, and it's it's like this cop thriller, and she's British. I don't know if she's British in, in real life or not. But anyway, she uh, she plays this British policeman, and he is a British, uh, and he is a, um, he's a serial killer, essentially. Uh, and it is brilliant. I don't know if they have it on. I don't think they have it on anymore. Um, because I went looking for it because uh, I wanted to watch it again. Um, but uh, but there's that one. And I love Idris Elba. I love Idris Elba. Um, and he did a series also very dark, uh, sort of a... Um, crime series where he's a he's a ethically challenged uh, policeman in Britain and um, he anyway I, I thought it was smart and brilliant and dark and oh my god but he's a good actor and he is so easy on the eyes um, I would watch that on a permanent loop if I if I could he it was just so good the characters were so good. Loved it. Uh, what else? What is the craziest thing you have ever done? Um, huh. well, there's another locomotive story. Um, that was, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll tell the other locomotive story. Um, I've done a bunch of really crazy things, but this one here... Uh, I didn't know it was crazy at the time, uh, but it was. Um, so again, with the same boyfriend who was a, an engineer, like a, a locomotive engineer, um, he invited me to stow away on his train. He drove freight trains. Um, and he invited me to stow away on the train that he was working on this one winter night. And, uh, and so I, I wasn't busy that night, so I said, sure. And, um, uh, oh, Pippi, you want to go outside? Okay, we'll go soon. I'm almost finished. Um, so I stowed away on this train. It was winter time. There was quite a bit of snow on the ground, and there were drifts of snow beside the tracks. And we went from London, Ontario, to a little town called Hensel. Uh, which I've never, which I'd never heard of before, and I've never been to since. Anyway, I don't know what the heck was going on in Hensel, but that's where um, they stopped the freight train. And um, what what the train men do is uh, they jump off the train as it's still moving across a level crossing. So uh, they were they were jumping off, and they told me to jump off. And, you know, the train was going very, very slowly. Hold on. What color am I working on? Three. Uh, The train was going very, very slowly, so this shouldn't have been dangerous. Um, And, you know, like I was nervous about it, but, you know, they said, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And these are all the guys, right, that are working on the train. Uh, So I, you know, um, held on to the handles of the, the stairs going to... Well, there's a step, and then usually there's like a platform, right, that the train um, is up against. 
but there was no platform. There was just the level crossing, and I was supposed to jump off at the level crossing. You know, you jump, you let go, and and you're on the road. Uh, except I didn't let go. So I jumped, but I didn't let go. And um, so what happened was that I'm holding on to these two railings, like on this, imagine a little, you know, the steps down from a train, and they have... They have the the bars. Yeah, it's I'm I'm pulling it towards me, but they're up and down bars. Anyway, so I'm holding on to this bar. My my hands down at the bottom of the bar. It curves down and and is welded to the train. Uh, but my legs are going under the train because I've now passed the level crossing, and um, and I'm in the snowbanks. Anyway, I, I didn't realize that I was in any danger whatsoever, and I'm just going, wee, and uh, this is so much fun. And anyway, so I finally let go, and I don't know, there must have been, there must have been, it, it was my lucky day. Um, because I, nothing happened. Um, anyway, so I'm like laughing, and oh, that was so much fun. And here's these, I don't know, four or five, these were big guys, like trainmen. They're often they're very big men, and uh, and and my boyfriend he was he was big. He was like six four, and not not fat, but he was a big man. Anyway, um, and uh, I see these guys, and their faces were completely white completely white um, they thought I was going to die I had no idea I was completely oblivious but they thought that I was going to die um, and they were amazed that I survived anyway so that I guess was the craziest thing that I have ever done I don't know how that ranks for you, but uh, that's another another thing. Um, okay, so I think that's it. I think that's as far as I'll go today because the painting is done. I've replaced all the drills. Now again, you guys might be saying, oh, you missed one, you missed one. Uh, and I'm sure I'll find it later, in which case I will, uh, in which case, oh, what's that? Oh, that's just a fluff. Okay, in which case I will uh, fill it in then. Anyway, I hope you liked. Uh, I hope you liked this mini uh, drill and chat. Um, that's it. I'm done. Thanks. Uh, hit like if you liked it. Um, if you want to hear more stories, I have so many stories, you guys. Oh my god! Like I was not a bad person, but. And I did not do bad things. I didn't necessarily do a lot of legal things or anything like that. I mean, you know. Um, but it just seems like I got myself into situations uh, in my life. So um, I did not lead a boring life. I led a very interesting life. A very good one, I must say. Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Oh, no, you know what? There is one more thing. There is one more thing. That is uh, the trash. Because now that I'm finished this painting, just set it aside. Now that I'm finished the painting, hold on, I need something non slippery. Uh, I pour the trash from today into here. And these drills are sticky because they uh, they were there's probably some adhesive left. Okay, so that is all the drills from this diamond painting. Whoa, where the heck are you? There you go. That's all the drills. That's quite a few. Um, but uh, but like I say, I've still got so many leftover drills. Uh, I have no idea what the hell I'm ever going to use them for, and I can't store them with the others. They'll just be in a crystal drills envelope. Uh, so now, I love this part. This is where I transfer 
my drills from my just finished project and this is the very last thing I do short of you know sealing paintings and stuff this one I don't think I'm well I might seal it um, like I say I'll test it I'll test it in a corner to see whether the Tombow aqua glue um, whether the Tombow aqua glue uh, will reduce the shininess um, and then I'll seal it if it doesn't. Anyway, that's it. I'm done. Project done. Uh, thank you for your attention. And I will be coming back to you very soon because I have lots of other videos. So I'm going to tell you about a, a video idea that I had uh, just this morning. Because last night I was, uh, I got an email from uh, somebody who had watched one of my videos. And um, she told me she had a channel as well. And so I went and I checked out her channel. And, um, and I, I, I liked this one video, like I thought, oh, that's a great video. I think, I think people would like that. So what I'm thinking of doing is actually having a video. It might not be every week. Uh, I'm not going to promise every week, but I'd like to do a video where I take, I find videos that I find on channels that don't have a lot of subscribers or a lot of views. And I just highlight that video. So they would be super short, you know, maybe three minutes. Uh, well, you know me, I talk a lot, so maybe not three minutes. But anyway, it would be super short. I would include a link to the person's video and I would just tell you what I like about the video. And uh, then it's up to you whether you actually want to go and visit or not. But I think that's one way that we as a community can share ideas. So if you know of somebody who's got, you know, I would say less than 100 subscribers, and um, and who you think that they do some really neat videos, especially things that you don't see other people doing. Um, because if it's just, you know, drill with me or whatever, everybody does drill with me. Uh, but like for this one, uh, her name is uh, Lynn LeClaire. Um, she, she actually demonstrated her uh, spreadsheet tracker. And, uh, and it was simple and it was innovative. There were a few really innovative ideas in it. And I thought, oh my God, that people should see this. And, uh, and so I was thinking, I'm gonna do a video to point people to her video. And uh, anyway, so let me know what you think of that idea. And, uh, and if, if people like that idea, then I'll do it at least for this one video. And my, my plan would be to do it uh, on a semi-regular basis after that. And now I'm really done. Okay, so have a wonderful rest of your day. And um, I will be back at you very soon. Bye-bye, lovelies.